everybody, it's Charlie and Nathan from Daily Motor. Welcome to the live drive of the 2022 Cadillac CT4V Blackwing. Got to remember that last part there because that is what truly sets off this compact sedan to being one of the sportiest and best to drive sedans on the market today in 2022. So we're gonna spend the next hour or so driving this thing around, sliding this thing around, having a lot of fun with its six-speed manual and its twin turbocharged 3.6 liter V6. We've got Alyssa behind the camera right now. Nathan's gonna be coming along as well. We're gonna be admiring this very, very bright blue paint. I have no idea what it's called. We'll have to check the Monroney, but it should be Robin's Egg Blue or something. It definitely stands out. It's honestly really, really similar to the M5 Competition paint that we had over the summer last year. Robin eggs blue. Oh, it matches Nathan's glasses. <laughs> so, so does that imply it's very kind to the environment? Not exactly, although it is a V6 instead of the V8 that's in the CT5. That makes all the difference. Right, yeah. That's, that's extra scary. oil for the turbos. <laughs> a lot of carbon fiber too. Not only does this have the carbon fiber one package, but it also has the carbon fiber two package because in classic GM, they have two different carbon fiber packages you can spend a lot of money to get. Do you know what the difference between those two packages are? I'm assuming more carbon fiber. <laughs> and you probably can't get two without one. So one probably adds like this splitter and two probably adds like this second one. Jeez. <laughs> what if I want two and not one? Then you'd have to remove everything that's on one, I guess. But you do have quite a few carbon fiber bits. This little thing, is that carbon fiber? It doesn't look like it. That might just like be it. plastic. I think it's just plastic. This is so dirty I can hardly tell, but it is carbon fiber. I don't think we have carbon fiber wheels, although they do look similar-ish. We are rocking winter tires though, and that's important because it's below freezing today. You know why it's called the black? Because it's got a black it's wing. Got a black it's got wing. a black wing. Really, it should be called it's the It's also carbon, carbon fiber wing. though. Yeah, the, the gray wing. It, the wing does help kind of break up this bulbous rear end though. When we had the normal CT4V, it was white, and this kind of just looked like a big, like a, a whale back or something like that, like a humpback look. It's kind of strange, but this wing, even though it's very large, it does sort of break it up. That kind of helps. Um, other than that, this thing's got some big old brakes and a tight back seat, medium-sized trunk. But let's hop in, take a look at the interior, get this thing started up, go for a drive a little bit. We'll do another walk around in a little while once we get a few more people in. Let us know if you're in the chat, we'll bring them up in the car. This have snow tires? Sure does. Huh. Winters or all seasons? Winters. Winters. Nice. And the red seat belts. Yeah, it's kind of a neat interior. A lot of uh, a lot of options. You got Nathan's red seat belt there. You got sort of this white on black. You got a lot of red going yeah. today. <laughs> have, you been, have, to, have you been seeing red lately with your your rough days over the last few days? It's been a like, tough week for you. I got my blue sunglasses, my red jacket, red seat. Yeah, that's kind of the problem. Is it clashes? It does. You're right. It's it's definitely strong. And you and you've got a uh, maroon sweater on. Yeah, so that's gonna clash as well. Does Alyssa? Actually, it looks quite good with Alyssa's outfit. Everyone say hello her to Alyssa. Her outfit matches this interior pretty well, besides the scarf. Actually, you're right because look, her white jacket is very similar to the white seat inlays. And the, I do with red the red stitching. And a little bit of red. Yeah, you are you are made for this Cadillac, Alyssa. Speaking of that, we do have some donation amounts today. I think we've got uh, for every dollar is a thank you. For every five dollars, we will launch it with this six-speed manual. And at twenty dollars, we'll do some donuts. And I think also at twenty dollars, we'll entertain the option of maybe Nathan getting behind the wheel. It's been a little while since we've driven a manual, but this is a pretty nice manual to drive. Overall, this interior is not quite. Listen, mind me comments. Yeah, I can read comments. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. You were just talking about the interior though. Okay. It's not quite what? I was just gonna say it's not quite BMW levels of quality in here, but uh, everything is quite solid. Uh, it's just kind of a few weird weird well, touches. I like the attention to detail of the glossy black, black um, mm -hmm. panels right here. Yeah. Oh look, you even have little things there that say black wing. Not quite coming up. Here we go. Subtle. Everything is very solid. It passes the my picky interior inspection. Good. Except for this though, this is a little bit. <laughs> That's the only flaw, this little bit right here. This is Alcantara. Alcantara. Nice. Cool. Uh-oh. What? This microphone thing is not 
squared. It's crooked, like a crooked picture. I don't know if you can pick that up. Yeah, you can pick it up on the camera. It's like a crooked picture frame. <laughs> Will never be unseen. Yep. Well, it's like when Chevy made the steering wheels off-centered. Yeah. You didn't know until you figured it out. Then it was the most annoying thing ever. Yep. Do we have extendos? Ooh, yeah, very nice extension. And a little handle, so I'm happy. Oh, extension's over here. Every door has a handle. Yeah, which is good because this thing goes pretty quick. <laughs> Who do we got in the chat, Liz? We have Super X, which you already saw. Mm -hmm. Sahid Ali says hi. Hello. Richard uh, is asking how much horsepower. 472 horsepower. 400, and I want to say 45 pound-feet of torque. Okay. Uh, the Pittsburgh man says, oh, hello. Hello, Pity. Yas is excited that it's a manual. Me too. Look at it. It's a nice manual too. You got, it's, I don't know if it's going to come up well on camera, but this is uh, like a little metal top piece and it's, it's textured as well. Feels good. Looks good. It's a nice shifter. The Pittsburgh man is also complimenting how well I'm dressed. Thank oh, you. yeah. And Moran says, howdy. Hello, Moran. Moran, what are your thoughts on the new CT4 and CT5V? black wings because i've heard i mean this one is definitely a good driver's car i've heard the ct5 just takes that to the next level so yeah what do you think neat uh nathan you mind hopping out real quick i'll do an exhaust startup i'd love to okay Get Get my shades on mm -hmm. can't start the car without the shades of course it's I do like the rear end styling, especially with the wing. It's very clean, but stylish at the same time. That sounds like a V8, even though it's not. That does not sound like a V8. Lots of very poppy. It does sound very good though. V6s have their ways of sounding like a V8 on the startup rumble but when you rev them, they sound good, but not like a V8. To get the V8, you do need to get the, the, um, scratching my head, the, was the CTS. No, it's the CT5, that's what I'm thinking of. The CT5 V Blackwing. Blackwing has an eight. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder why GM changed that. I also, well, no, it was always, uh, the ATS always had a V6. Couldn't get the V8 in the ATS. No, I'm saying why they changed the name. Oh, yeah, because they're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> also, interestingly, the middle seatbelt is not red. So you can see Alyssa's move, <laughs> and now her seatbelt is black. Nope, yeah. bad car. I wonder if you can pay more to get the fifth seatbelt be red. It's a uh, um, so red number two package. Yeah, you're right, yeah, red seatbelt two. You can interrupt me, Alyssa, if there's ever... Like, like a good time that you need to get comments in. We just have more people saying hello. Who's Nate Sabell and Killer. Hello. Killer BG Master or no, just, just Killer? just Killer. Just Killer. Hello. I love playing with this. You love playing with the with this. I love stick. playing with this. Nathan, stick. it's not Friday. <laughs> Why? Well, well, it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> there are a ton of drive modes in this thing. It actually gets a little confusing. And, and it's kind of funny. I realized driving it earlier that it's almost like manufacturers started making so many drive modes and then people got overwhelmed so they started making fewer drive modes so you've got down here your mode selector you can go through and choose nothing it's not even coming up because I'm in V mode we'll get back to that in a second choose my mode snow and ice track sport or tour then you can individually customize all these things if you're in my mode I thought you said it was off. supposed to be more intuitive. Well, all right, I'm getting to that. So you can customize your steering, suspension, brake feel, engine sound to make all those, like we want uh, light steering, light suspension, but decent sporty brake feel and a lot of engine sound. We can do that for my mode. But then when you realize there's so many different options, there's more because you have this little switch and that makes it so you can change your traction modes. There's performance traction, inactive, wet, dry, sport, race one, or race two. So you've got all those. But then once you realize that's entirely just overwhelming, I'd rather just have one button, you have the V button. And you can just press that. And if you press it again, then you can get, it goes straight to race two performance traction. What's the difference between race one and race two? 
Uh, race one is a little bit more stability control. Race two is a little bit less. So it's not fully off, but it's almost all the way. Why isn't there a race three? Because that's I, or too four. many, <laughs> too many at that point. There's not enough race. <laughs> I know it's it's kind of crazy, but anyway, I like driving this thing around in race one. You guys were right about the middle seatbelt. I prefer. Is there really a? Yeah, the Pittsburgh man just said red package four makes that middle seatbelt red. The sport mode dash more red and offers Nathan shades. Oh wait, maybe he's being silly. <laughs> Nathan shades in a red tint. It's, it, he's probably just playing a joke. I totally bought it though. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Moran thinks it's one of the best in its class, especially better than the three series. Yeah, Moran hates BMWs. Yeah. I used to. I don't like the. A lot of the mid two thousands BMWs. I like the looks of them, mm -hmm. but I don't like the way a 3 Series drives and the 5 Series is unreliable. Horribly unreliable, yeah. which is a shame. Yeah. So is the 7 Series. Work. Nowadays though, I like BMWs over all the German groups. Yeah, I think I have to agree. I was Team Mercedes for a while there, but I think I'm over to BMW, especially after we had that GLS and I was kind of like, eh, you know what, I think I'd rather have the Alpine XB7. So this is a really nice manual to drive. It, it, if you've ever driven a Camaro, it feels very similar to that. Very good uh, throw size. It kind of clicks into gear nicely. The clutch is a little heavy. It takes a little bit of getting used to where the bike is. And it's not the most impressive car ever from a speed perspective, but the, you have fun doing it, and that's almost more important than just the outright speed. Because in today's day and age of electric vehicles, I mean, so many things can go fast these days, but it's how you feel getting there that's arguably a little bit more important. Is that full throttle? Yep. It's just a little bit of turbo lag. right around 450 horsepower. And that's because it's enough that you could you could go just as fast as you could possibly want to go. It'll get you up to well over 100 very quickly. Oh, and I guess my Apple CarPlay is kicking in. But at the same time, it is a, a low enough amount of power that you can go full throttle in your daily driving and not be doing 100 immediately. You can actually sort of go like that. get some of those cracks and burbles and then get off of it before you get hauled to jail. <laughs> Not like a AMG GT, GT 63S. Right, where you're just jailing. <laughs> Prison. Prison. Nice high red line. I think it's about just 6,500 RPM. It sounds good too. It's very smooth, I think. From a passenger standpoint. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh wow, it landed in. <laughs> landed in here. Nice. You gotta pull it out and set it in the cup holder. Alright, what do people have to say, Liz? A lot. Okay, let's hear it. Supra X says I'd push I'd push this over the sea of BMWs in a DMV. Alright. Kunal Harak. Oh, it's Kunal. Kunal. Um, says my mode is sweet. The settings you keep in my mode will be saved through key cycles, including the exhaust. Huh. Uh, Super X also says BMWs have way more modes. <laughs> that um, is true. Yeah. The Pittsburgh man says Mercedes is going. Mercedes going to a bunch of turbo soon. Yeah, that's a good point. And Canal says, imagine if this if it had LT1 instead. That would be the best sports sedan. Yeah, the LT1 is the is the V8 that they put in, in wow. a lot of the sports cars. Yeah. I mean, that would be that'd be really nice. Although yeah. this engine is still really good, and because it has this V6, it's a little bit lighter, so that does help with its playfulness. That's good. Mm -hmm. Killer is asking if it's a twin turbo. 
It is a twin turbo, yes. Although, why not just like a 3.9 liter, 4 liter V8? Why don't... That'd be cool if GM came, came out with one of those. Like a high revving V8? Not even super high revving, but get decent power, <laughs> decent lightness, no turbo lag. Uh -huh. Kind of an understressed V8. Because then you'd have like a 270 horsepower V8 probably, <laughs> like, a, like a Ford motor or something. does have flat foot you're right I'm, I don't think I've ever done that if someone wants to put in the steps to do that I'm, I am happy to try it what is that it's where you typically in a manual car you have to let off of the gas onto the clutch shift let off the clutch back onto the gas and this he's saying it has a mode where you can just leave your foot down on the gas press the clutch shift and never take your foot off the gas oh, and the car just cuts the power for a quick second that's pretty okay. cool Sounds like lazy shit, but kind of. But it's so you can do it even faster. I mean, it's, it's barely gonna make that much of a difference. Well, but. if you want to do it super, were you in here earlier? Um, I may have made a few turns in here. Just a few turns. Oh look, returning now. <laughs> a little freebie there. Yep. Nice. <laughs> super X says I can see a tune doing wonders. Oh yeah, you could probably pull a bunch of power out of this with a tune. And yes, is that? it seems like really long ratios. I I did notice that, Yas. Yeah, so you have a good point. That is a downside with a lot of newer manual cars. And I don't know if this is uh, for zero to 60 numbers or if it's for EPA or what, but we noticed that with, what was it? The, the, the GLI and the GTI or something. Some manual car we had recently had really long ratios in first and second. And it was just like, you can't, you don't get to shift that much because you're just, got these whole long ratios so I don't know I mean what he means for anyone who doesn't quite understand is if I'm let's get all the way down into first real quick so first gear will go all the way up to 48 miles per hour and then second 60 miles per hour. Probably. Yeah. Oh. My Taurus is like that too. Yeah. It gets all the way to 60 and then just like 65 then it shifts. Yep. Alright, we're all caught up. Okay. One thing's a bit of a complaint is that burbling does kind of get old a little bit. Because it's just like a, a, a weird like rumbling. It sounds like thunder in the distance. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's cool for a little while but I did notice it got a little obnoxious. Love having rev match though, you just drop the gear and it just goes right down to where you need it to be. Yeah, it's just a it's a very nimble car that I've actually had fun driving. It's been so long since I've had a car that I've actually been excited to dr go drive from a driving perspective. I've had cars recently that are that I'm excited to be in because they're luxurious or they're cool. They have a good sound system or something, but it's probably been since the last, I don't know, Miata or something that we've had that I've been excited to just go out and just drive the car. And it's almost getting a little cliche at this point because everyone, all the, the magazines and the outlets have been praising these new Cadillacs for how well they drive, but it's really accurate. I mean, it's such a communicative chassis. The shifting is so nice, the steering is just right, there's so much power, and it, it just, everything feels like they, they put someone in the car and just said, hey, how can this be good, really good, and then they did. Nathan and I were talking about that the other day, what, what were we talking about that with? The Taos? Um, or just in general, maybe? We were talking about GM and their, how they had that focus group that like did that. Yeah, we were talking, it was that, and maybe it was when we were in the Taos or something, about how there are certain decisions that automakers make that just make you kind of scratch your head, like, why, why would they do this? And you would think they could just get someone in there who would just look over everything and be like, do this, do this, don't do this. And then at the end of development, it would all be good and ready to go. And it seems like that's kind of what Cadillac did here is like, 
you just do the smart things and don't do stupid things. <laughs> it's not that hard. So yeah, it's it's a good car. Was that a GTI? I think it is. is. Let's go catch it. Most people who are that concerned would just get the automatic. Yeah, I and mean, dual clutch <laughs> can shift so much faster than any person with no, usually little to no um, mess ups either. Right. Supra X says, I would set my mode to include quiet exhaust. I have a silencer on my Supra for that reason. Hmm. That's, That's pretty neat. Cool. What do you have a silencer that. on your Supra for? Iris? That's his preference. Killer says, so it's a manual. The only thing you need to do is drop a gear and disappear. <laughs> You're right. Cute. By the way, it's me without VG Master. It is Killer VG Master. <laughs> He's just killer now. He's just killer. Nice. And the Pittsburgh man says, time to go find a scat pack and try to bully it. Ooh. That would be funny. That would be funny. Or a Mustang. Yeah. Or even a Camaro. Yeah. All caught up. Cool. Let's go do a little bit of a walk around. I wonder if we'll get um, Joey Finley in about halfway, and I think there's uh, someone else who's been coming in partway through. Looks like someone's already been here. It wasn't us from when we had that truck? Nope. I guess I don't want to get out here because then all our shoes are going to be out right <laughs> Peaceful. When you want to be done with V mode, you just press V again and you're back to quiet, calm. Just a nice, easy to drive luxury sedan. This does have an AKG audio system, as I think it was Supra pointed out at the beginning. Yes. And I haven't tested it too much yet, only done the intro. I'm sure it's going to sound pretty good but stay tuned for that. I'm gonna be testing it tomorrow. I wonder how the connection's been. Hopefully good. We're good so far. Cool, yeah. Seems to be holding up decently. Let's see, where can we get out? It's not gonna be snow. I guess we could go back over toward the garage. Fuel economy has been 13.3 miles per gallon over the last 78 miles. Hmm. <laughs> Comparable to a truck. <laughs> Um, 
I'm getting the Civic Si next week as well, and a new Grand Cherokee. Ooh, that'll be nice. Yeah, we got a lot of good cars starting 22 off here. We also have a Volkswagen Taos this week. That car's nice. Nathan and I were driving yeah. it around. It's a good little car. I like it. Mm -hmm. A little pricey though, but everything's pricey these days. Yeah. Killer is asking if it's a V8 because it sounds like it. It is not. Just a little V6. But a powerful V6. It's not, it's not little. It's three and a half liters. 3.6. We need to do a backseat view when we go to okay. the garage parking lot. Yeah, that's a good idea because yeah. it's a little tight back there. Oh, like a Ram Eco Diesel. Nice. Eco Diesel. Didn't they get sued for those? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were not the most reliable. Probably still aren't. I'm surprised this one's still out there. <laughs> I always wonder what happened to them because it seemed like. They still make them. Oh. Yeah, they just had to revise some things. Well, weren't there also environmental things, kind of like Volkswagen? I do think they were cheating as well, yes. Cheaters never win, folks. Super X says in, I'm guessing this is Northern Virginia. Okay. We have noise laws. Uh, so we got tired of getting tickets. And <laughs> oh. Also says, I like my hearing. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, Virginia doesn't seem like the best place to be a car person because... So much traffic. Well, traffic, they also have the most draconian speeding laws. I think if you get pulled over doing like 20 over, it's a reckless driving ticket. And you can get your car impounded and go to jail. So, and radar detectors are illegal. So, I do 20 over, like, I know. Just cruising. And you I just did 20 over. I've, go I've gone by cops doing 20 over in here and they just, well, whatever. Right. I got pulled over for doing 20 over. I got written for one to five and then got it dropped. So. Not gonna happen in Virginia. When my brother and sister-in-law lived in Virginia Beach, mm -hmm. um, they have like six lane highways there, and she got pulled over and eventually went to jail. Did she really? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. So very, very bad. Yeah. That's she was very angry. Understandably so. She, and she was a veteran, right? She was. She was in the Navy at that in time. In the active yeah. duty and still went yeah. to jail. Yeah. 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 What? Are, are you guys really? catching all those criminals with your speeding yeah. laws like yeah is it worth it is, is that worth the american taxpayer's money to to yeah. be putting uh the the law-abiding citizens who just need to get somewhere to pee yeah putting them behind bars meanwhile i smashed a pothole with my car and break the suspension and yeah that's where all that money's we'd going. rather put the money toward uh toward that yeah I, we can't go anywhere 20 over because we can't go anywhere. <laughs> the cars are broken. Okay, so Moran wants, I'm not sorry, uh, Pittsburgh man wants to know if this has heated, cooled seats, powerful mirrors, back seat amenities, anything like that. We do have heated and cooled seats, or at least ventilated. That might not be cooled, but it's at least ventilated. Back here too, or probably not? Probably, I don't see the buttons back there. They'd be probably under this if there were any. Yeah, it's very stark. Yeah. Back here. And for power folding mirrors, that is going to be a no as well. Anything else we asked about? Just other amenities? We just wanted to know quirks and features. Yeah, uh, surprisingly few. Uh, I, I'm surprised it didn't have the camera mirror. No sunglasses holder. Um, it's honestly a pretty simple infotainment, although it does work quite well. You do have wireless device charging. Lots of carbon fiber. And uh, wireless Android on an Apple CarPlay, which is good. Cool. Yeah, I do like that. It's kind of a small screen, honestly, compared to the screens of the it is modern modern world. I mean, this car costs seventy seven thousand dollars. Yeah, wow. And you're getting just kind of a base system. You're not paying the screen. No, certainly not. You, and, you and do get a screen over there though, which is good. It's not even necessarily the size for me that matters. It's the fact that it's just kind of basic. Like it, it really is. Although on the flip side, it does work really well, and I'd rather have a simple screen that works well and responds quickly and everything than a fancy screen like the Subaru one that works like garbage. So, gotcha. Cl yeah. climb it off. What happens if you turn? Oh, and it's got extendos for under uh, for your thighs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. The Pittsburgh man also says at this point he's just waiting for a Raptor Explorer to complete the lineup. Yeah, well, Rapto, Raptor Eco Sport is what we really need. Or Echo Sport, sorry. Echo Sport. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Like put like the 27 in there and have it give it like 300 horse. Ah. <laughs> um, uh, an Explorer ST with the Raptor engine would be really cool. It would be. Or with a 5OV. Imagine an Explorer with a 5OV8. That would just be dreaming. What I would like to see some brands do is go 
you don't have to make every performance SUV be an off-roady SUV. Mm -hmm. You could put, you could do an Explorer ST, which I guess the X ST is kind of this way, yeah. but make it like top dog, like yeah. Nathan said, Raptor motor, really fast, but it doesn't need to be an off-roader. Just make it, yeah. just make it same, a street version. Same thing with pickup trucks. I feel like there's a lot of pickup trucks that benefit from like having a street sport version. Yeah, which you kind of get with like, again, there's the Durango SRT, but make a Ram SRT, you know, because they have the Ram yeah. TRX. They had a Ram 1500 SRT. That would be awesome. With the TRX's motor, but like street tires and everything. Yeah. Okay, so Moran says for the auto class, he's got an R8, but for the garage race, where most of the cars are manual, he has the GT350, and that's why he tuned the 350 up okay. to be that makes full sense. drag build. That makes sense. And Carp Diem says, um, it's actually Carper Diem. Says, I am an EV fan, but this Blackwing is giving me unpure thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, man. I mean, realistically speaking, for my daily, I would take a Model 3 Performance, but this is much more fun to drive than a Model 3 Performance. Yeah. 100%. Louder. I feel like the car shaking. Yes. Sitting in the middle back here. It's kind of fun. Yeah. And the Pittsburgh man also says, all those things that they cut and couldn't even throw in a fifth seatbelt in red for free. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, Pittsburgh man, none of it is free because this car has about $20,000 worth of options on it. You start out at $59, you got to pay for the sky cool gray with jet black accent with leather seating. I assume that's all the interior stuff. It's a suede microfiber wrapped trim package, the steering wheel high performance, carbon fiber one, carbon fiber two, the performance data and video recorder, technology package electric blue paint, the wheels, the climate package, which gives you uh, the ventilated and, um, oh, it's got massaging seats. Oh, really? Neat. Oh, what? Bronze calipers, seatbelt color being torch reds, $400. I mean, all that comes out to 77 grand. That is a lot. Built in Lansing, though. That's cool. Oh, oh that is very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nathan just pointed out the performance data recorder. We'll open this up again when we're on the road, but this is a pretty neat function that, that GM has. You can record your driving and it does a few things. You, you can, um, it'll record like your throttle inputs, your brake inputs, your G's, and it'll do that all over a video recording. So you can actually have 1080p recording out of the dash cam that's wow. up here and save it to the SD card. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that next time we're driving and then we'll bring up the recording to show you. I like that. I, I honestly don't understand why more cars don't have this. Yeah. I know. It seems like it, nowadays it's such an easy thing. Well, and even just having dash cams built in in general, it's mm -hmm. just like that's one of my favorite things about the Tesla is that you have dash cams all around. I remember when yeah. you were racing and that guy hit you and I had to be sitting up on the hill yeah. watching the race yep. in the Tesla. Like, oh, just pull it up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Moran says, I would like to buy the CT4 and turn it into a grip driving monster, but I have to see the CT5 and then decide which one is better for grip driving. Good call. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. And oh, the Pittsburgh really man says, it has a 360 camera at least. Mm -hmm. And Moran got an update from Tesla. Oh. Said his plaid should be delivered on March 28th. Well, Moran, it's interesting you say that because I noticed here in Michigan, there are like five plaids that say they're available in inventory and technically they're in Ohio. So maybe yours is just a very particular order that's taken them a while, but if you didn't want to wait any longer, I think there might be some in inventory. Yeah. yeah. He said he was going to drive out to this way. Oh yeah, you're picking up your um your parts for your your Dana transmission or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, he was going to be in he was in Holly and is he going to come back whatever. Something like that, yeah. Can yeah. I point out something that mm -hmm. is a common gripe I see on cars? They have the volume thing down here. So tap 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. But then you have this right here. I know. Why isn't why that isn't this? Because, and what these buttons do is they scroll back and forth. Why? I just don't. I hate tapping buttons for all. I'll, I to agree. be fair, you got this right here. Is it still. a tap and hold? Do you think that'll work too? Because sometimes that's a thing. Yeah, yeah but still, it takes a while. But, At least the Maverick has right here is a mute button. So it's, even I though it's got that. tap taps, there's a mute. So if you need to turn it down real quick, you can just do that. Tap taps and mutes. In fact, Nathan called me earlier while I was driving this car. And for some reason, the Bluetooth, I hit answer on the car and the radio kept playing and it was going through my phone, even though I answered on the That's car. Frustrating. So yeah, I had I, to- I called you and it was just, just like, I could hear Todd. I'm like, what on earth is it? <laughs> yeah. I thought it was on my end. I'm like, what is, cause I was in my 
my car. I thought it was my Bluetooth. Like, what is going on? Sure. I'm gonna hop on in back and check out the rear seats. We'll do a little walk around first. Only if you want to. Very nice blue color. This thing's looking really good, especially as the sun goes down. And we've got kind of this golden hour lighting. I don't know, would you own a car in this color, Nathan? Yes. Okay. It's tough for me to decide because it's a little look at me-ish, but it's also kind of cool. Yeah, so. they, have, they have a thing to tell you how to fill up your car. Oh, wow, thank you. Put the gas okay. thing in and hold it. <laughs> I do like capless fuel fillers though, so thank goodness for that. That's a deep trunk. It is. You'd think they could have taken a little bit of trunk space and put it into rear seat space, but that uh, would be nice. Yeah, well, it is functional. And sometimes Get you know, golf clubs in there. Cadillac yes. owners need to put golf clubs yep, and bodies in the back the of their cars. The important thing is, is golf clubs. Mm -hmm. Bodies. Sometimes when you're a Cadillac owner, you got to be able to put bodies in your trunk. Oh, wow, there's a scrapey brushy thing. Yeah, I hit it under there so it didn't slide around as we drifted. <laughs> yep. And let's see how easy it is to close when uh, it's dirty. Uh. A problem, a common problem in Michigan, Michigan is. So wait, wait, wait. You go to close the thing. That's true, but especially with opening it, this all gets dirty, especially with the button being down here. And I see this in a lot of cars. This all gets caked with snow and ice after you've been driving. Then you go to open the trunk and you, either your hands get filthy and salty and slushy, or you can't even get to it. And it's a huge pain in the butt. But it's nice that it pops open like that. But I wish like, what if the, like, you, you also to, probably don't want to put a lot of weight yeah, on you don't the spoiler. Want to pull on this. Um, yeah. But a lot of people will. Which yeah. Which is the bad thing. Well, hopefully, if they own a CT4 Blackwing Edition, they know what they're doing. Hopefully. Hopefully. Sometimes it's the passengers, though, that you got to worry about. Yeah, That's I have true. Had that Someone one time went to the back of my SHO. They didn't even un un unlatch it first. They just started yanking on the spoiler, and it's like flexing. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Who was that? Never mind. Don't answer. Right, let's check out the back seat. Let's see what the front feels like. As you can see, it is a bit tight. <laughs> Fortunately, they made this soft, so that helps a little, but it's not like soft, soft. It's just like smooth. Slady. Yeah. But at five foot ten, my head is hitting the back if I sit perfectly upright. This is not a car meant for back seaters, it's a car meant for front seaters. Yeah. You do have a flip down armrest five seats total and one singular USB-C as well as a 12 volt back there and some air vents. Some people really care about having the air vents. Yeah, because you got to heat the back seat. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. When I first got in this car, I hit my head right here. Oh yeah, I could easily see that. <laughs> yeah, because oh. look how much your head is cut off. Yeah, we should have Nathan sit in the back for the next segment so that he can complain about it. Well, let's, let's take a look under the hood while after Nathan uh, gets settled in there. I want to film Nathan getting in this. Oh man. And you got the nice Alcantara seat back, which will not get dirty at all. <laughs> how might, how do you feel uh, your feet room? Foot room obviously isn't a big deal. It's knee room. Knee room. Okay. Oh. And, Foot room was and an issue for room. me. My head was touching the ceiling. Yeah, that's what Charlie said too. If you were any bigger, then <laughs> this would not be fun. You demand the passenger seat shotgun. How much the sheet the the the, the, the sheet the seat. Shakes it off. Shakes. I Charlie can, like, is demanding. I can twist and turn the seat back here and I can move. I really did use those handles. Did you? Yeah. On the back of the seat. Let's look at the the guts. Yeah, it's kind of a cool uh, engine compartment. You got the V there as well as the V up here on this little liner. Got some strut tower braces that go to the back and then to the strut towers and then up to the front as well. So pretty neat. Pretty uh, Pretty well set up. Yeah. yeah, very clean. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Very chilled. Yes. Are you riding back? Yep. Okay. I'm just reading more angry comments about pickup trucks. Disconnect. I blame the car because when I started it back up, it connected to my phone via wireless CarPlay, and then all of a sudden, the uh, connection went out. So the phone and the GoPro and the hotspot all have to have a little threesome together to communicate and broadcast all this stuff. And then you got Cadillac barging in and ruining it. Typical. <laughs> anyway, we're back. We're gonna go do a little bit more driving. If there's anything else you'd like to know or see, let us know. 
You know what we've been surprisingly uh, devoid of recently is annoying spam commenters. Oh, ha! It's funny that you bring that up because oh, really? uh, the Pittsburgh man just uh, deleted someone's message that was fully in Russian and super weird. So thank you. I actually wanted to thank Pittsburgh man for doing that. Well, fair enough. I was thinking more of, I can't even remember who exactly it was, but people who used to ask like, can you honk the horn, can you honk the horn, can you honk the horn, honk the horn, yeah. and then like, you know, yeah, Yep. a lot of repetitive things like that. So uh, I'm sure it'll be back someday, but it's interesting that that hasn't been happening. Nice Tesla. Ooh, beautiful. I really don't have that much head from back here. You really don't? Yeah. This is kind of annoying, I will point this out. You have to turn on rev match every time you restart the car. So you'll go into a corner like that and downshift and expect it to match and it doesn't. So I don't know why that setting doesn't just maintain. Hmm. Or they could have the rev matching be tied in with V mode, which would work as well. With these handles though, it does give me, if I was a kid back here, Charlie, I want my apple juice. Yeah, you're I want right. my apple juice. You have to beat your kid then. Yeah. Or just get the ass with her and slam his head back in the bus. I'm watching that apple juice burn on the screen. <laughs> just a reminder if we can get up to $20 worth of donuts. just shows you how long it takes for a brand to change its reputation because yeah. Cadillac has been building impressive sports cars for over a decade but like Alyssa gets in and she's like oh I didn't realize Cadillac made like sporty cars it's like yeah yeah I mean I called this car a Mercedes this morning when it was in our driveway right people yeah. just still don't expect that who aren't in the car world so it really takes a long time and it doesn't help when Cadillac does stupid things like establish a brand like V and then dilute it by making V be the middle tier and Blackwing be the high tier. Huh. Oh, we're gonna do the performance data recorder. Let me turn that on real quick. Performance data recording? Yep, right here. You got PDR. These tracks are from me. Actually, those ones are. Oh no, yeah, these definitely are, because you can tell. <laughs> Let's go look real quick. Look at how the tracks go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that one up there. <laughs> Is that you? Yes, it was me. That's awesome. Last night. Anyway, performance data recorder. Here, and then start recording. And then it'll actually record us for a little while, and then we can come back and watch it. Oh, very cool. And we can watch the recording on a recording on a recording. So cool. Premium content here at Daily Motor.
Gotta get them donos. I know. Donos for donuts. Donos for donuts. Donos. Donos. Ron says next week Friday I'm going to drive to Holly, but I can't find winter tires for the 812 nor the 765 LT. Apparently finding winter tires in 35R20 uh, is impossible at the moment in California. Um, Moran, see what size tires the, I think it's the Camaro ZL1 1LE takes, because I'm pretty sure Chris Brower had a set of really? ridiculous tires that accidentally got shipped to his house <laughs> from, t from, um, I want to say from Michelin, and I'm pretty sure he said they would only fit, like, the ZL1 1LE Camaro and also like some sort of Ferrari or something like that. So, wow. Although, take it back, I don't think they were winter tires. I think they were performance tires. So, never mind. Oh, Rip. wow. Rip. Um, <clears throat> Want to know what one thing I've observed about this car? Yes. It has a weird mixture of straight lines and sharp edges and curves. Like, let me see this. So, you got like these straight lined, um, uh, seat holes right here then you got a curvy door handle and curvy like um door side panels but then you got and then in the rear end too you got kind of like a mixture of sharp angles and then wavy curves too same thing with the steering wheel and kind of all over the interior it's a weird mixture i'm not sure well the steering wheel has to be round i'm not talking about the uh, <laughs> corvette would make it different or tesla yeah the yoke I'm not talking about that, but the, like a uh, dashboard design and like the um, middle of the steering wheel and stuff. It's just, it's kind of unsettling for me. I don't really know how I feel about the styling. Interesting. But again, that's... Oh, hello! Yeah. Lady 12. Is there that license? <laughs> and that might be a lady. I can't really that tell. Is. <laughs> yeah, me. Charged. Yeah, it does. Um... Luke M-Tech is asking how it compares to the M34i. Oh, M340i. I'm sorry, yeah. M340. Um, I feel like the M340i feels faster, but this is much more satisfying to drive. I, I, I really like the M3, the full-blown M3, and I would probably take an M3 over this. Okay. But... This is, this does have a better transmission than the manual M3, M4. I just kind of prefer your technology. And you were also mentioning earlier that this has, what, 400? Yeah, 476. 476 horsepower, and you actually prefer the sports cars that are in the four to 500 horsepower range because you're able to actually use all of that with your daily driving. Yes. <laughs> if you want to. Right. Yeah.
hydroplane like it's someone's business. Understandable. And Joshua John is in the chat. Hey Joshua John, Weird, I was just saying, I wonder if you'd tune in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how is the overall build quality and materials quality of the car? We'll let Nathan be the final answer of that. Um, build quality I would give a 9 out of 10. Interior quality I'd give an 8 out of 10. Just because the 10 out of 10s are being reserved for crazy, like... Rules. Yeah. But it's very good. Yeah, I agree. Very solid. Every now and then there's a little material that you're kind of like, really? Or design choice? But overall, it's quite good. And very solid. Going over all these creeks and, uh, you know, <laughs> like, uh, cracks. Yeah. There's... Cracks in the road. Yeah. It's not, like... Some cars have nice materials, but they're not very well put together and they creak, like the Mercedes creaky plastics. Yep. Mm. Um, some cars have not too nice materials, but they're very well put together. This kind of has both. All right. Caught up? Yeah. Cool. Nathan, would you like to go out and do recording? I would love to get out and do the honors of recording. So just go ahead and stand like right in the middle there and I'll drift around. Yeah. And here's the hot pot. Here's my phone. Put that in your pocket. Yeah. Can you hold that, please, Alyssa? Oh, yeah, sorry. Alright, so, phone. In. Zit. Look at Charlie's happy face. <laughs> Alright, thank here we go. you. Right here. Further back. that for camera work. Double. <laughs> Very nice. Is that cool? Yeah, it was cool. Very cool. <laughs> there's one just, oh, uh, there you go. There's one just right there in the middle where I, I got too much steering angle and had to. <laughs> oh. Neat. Very neat. Is it cool to be on the inside for one of those? I like that, yeah. It's funny because I'm not actually, I'm watching the car through both the cameras, yeah. not through my own eyes. Right. Oh, I gotta get the seatbelt to move. Oh no. Seatbelt on. <laughs> thing now. It's like doing brain surgery. Oh, precisely. Get in there. I can't. <laughs> it, this is ridiculous. The seats are too narrow. Yeah, and the, the thing pushes down in the seat when you're trying to push the air. Yeah. Hot spot, please. Hot spot. Say hello to Jonathan so G. Fun. Oh, hey, Jonathan G. Then this, this would be a good car to put up against your IS, or at least maybe the, the V version of this would be a good car to put up against your IS. I hope you're enjoying that. We're doing more slidey slideys? Um, in a sec, but I did want to show before I forget the performance data recorder. Ah, correct. So, we recorded earlier, now you can go back and watch, and actually see... And see us sitting there. Now in a second we'll go... Does it play the sound through here? I don't think so. So if you were on a track or something, you could actually see all your stuff. You see your steering angle, how much you're pressing the gas right there, how much you're pressing the brake right there, your G-meter and your revs, and obviously speed and gear. I mean, it shows you everything from uh, from as you drive. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And it just records to an SD card that you can easily pop out. Can we skip ahead? Uh, yeah. Let's go to that uh, donut we just did. I don't think I was recording there. Oh. 
That would be kind of cool. That would be cool. It would have been cool, yes. But they can also just watch it on YouTube. Do you have to stop it manually or does it just time out? I don't know if you can make it run indefinitely. Obviously your SD card would fill up eventually, but you can stop it manually. Okay. It'll keep going until you do stop it or you fill up. Is there like a quick button without having to go into that setting to stop it? No, you no. do. Okay. If you'd like to see setting. the donut, go to Daily Motor Shorts. Oh, you just posted it? No, but I will. Here you will. I will. And you can just, just see the donut. Very interesting. How delightful. <laughs> Ah, uh, the pure joy of having a manual rear-wheel drive sports car. <laughs> Joshua John says you should try the longest drift BMW M5 challenge. <laughs> That's actually really cool. They had to refuel while drifting. Yeah. That's such a cool thing. You'd have to go into the screen and be like, would you like to unlock uh, steering mode you three for, for, that. for, for $7.99? Yes. Okay, your subscription to steering mode three yeah. has started now. Yeah, $7.99 a month. Yep. The Pittsburgh man says that's some self-incrimination -incrimina if you ever get caught speeding while using that. Well, well just, just delete, it. delete it. Don't tell them that you have it. <laughs> nope. Keep it for your own personal use. Like, did you record that? No. no. Are you sure? Right, that's the other one I was thinking of. Yeah. I, was, I was like, who's going to tune in right near the end? Ace Safari. Ace Safari does. The cell phones have come out. <laughs> Do you guys see the new uh, historic Willow Run sign? Very cool. Wow. Now everyone knows where they are. Yeah. Very cool. Where we are. Ooh, ooh. Betelka says, I wish we got these in Europe. I wish we got them in Europe too. Yeah. Where in particular in Europe? I always like to know where everyone's from. Christopher Brower commented, my precious. <laughs> what, an ATS behind us. The previous cooler version. Oh, wow. With the headlights. Cooler version of this car, I thought you just said? Kind of. I thought, the, I think the ATS looks better. But. Yeah. It's got a headlight out though. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Jonathan G is asking how this is for tall people. <laughs> bad. I think front back seat, seat's bad. You'd be tight, back seat impossible. And Charlie's five, how ten. tall are you? Five ten? Yeah. The okay. seat is all the way down. He also says this car seems to have a decent price space for what you get. What's the MSRP of this one as spec? 77. Yep. Uh, starts at 60. This one's spec 77. Yeah. And what's the trim on this one again? It's just a black wing trim. It just has a lot of options. Gotcha. Yep. And cool. doesn't have more horsepower. Well, the black wing has oh. 476. Mm. What does the regular V have? Like three high threes, oh. low threes, something like that. Gotcha. Mid threes. Huh. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. Right. We have a comment from Richard Kinney saying that he's from Colorado Springs. Oh. He's so nice. Yeah. Wow. Hopefully you're not getting burned down and fires out there. I don't know how close that is to Boulder, but I know Boulder's been dealing with forest fires. So. I wouldn't know. I don't know the geography of. Yeah, it's a big square. Big square, one side's pokey. 
Yeah. Pokey Square. I know it's Denver, Colorado Springs, and then Pueblo. Oh, well, I think Boulder's, Boulder's north of Denver, so maybe Colorado Springs is safe. I think Boulder is in the mountains, right? Because that's where all the skiers go. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Czech Republic. Ah, neat. Respect for trying to pass my name. You may not get <laughs> these, you. but <laughs> at least you guys get all the fun wagon <laughs> hatchbacks and wagons. Yeah, and you get Focus STs, so I don't want to hear it. And RS. Yeah, and um, Fiesta. Fiesta. And Fiesta ST. Do they get the Puma over there? Yes. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan says regarding the base price, yikes. Yeah. Knew it was too good to be true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we're good. Cool. Well, next week we will be here with. Um, I don't know what we're gonna live drive next week. What do you think? Would it be better to do Civic SI or Grand Cherokee? Grand Cherokee. I'm thinking Grand Cherokee as well. I think Civic would be fun to drive, but from like a video standpoint, I think there'll be more interesting stuff to talk about with the Jeep. I agree with that. Yeah. So we'll be here with the with the Grand Cherokee next week. But thank you all so much for tuning in checking out the CT4V Blackwing. I am happy to report that it does live up to all the hype and it's just a good satisfying car to drive. There aren't gonna be cars like this for too much longer. So I'm glad we have them now. Thank you all so much for watching. Liz, do we have any last minute comments we should get to? Uh, right, yes. Uh, Richard says I had two CTS on my third, on my third, now a uh, XT5. Huh. Neat. Jonathan says that's a Cayman GTS 4.0 money. I don't need back seats. <laughs> nice. And then Agreed. Pittsburgh Man says thanks for the live drive, and he also votes for the Grand Cherokee. Cool. Well, thanks to Nathan and Alyssa for coming along, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. <laughs>